In this lesson, we're going to talk about the core ideas of liberalism. We're going to be exploring a number of, of ideas that are centered around, um, you know, the liberal idea, the liberal thought, liberal ideology. Uh, so we'll specifically discuss the liberal idea of human nature and how that informs the liberal view of society and economics. So really, we're going to talk a lot about how human nature and how a, a, a liberalism has interpreted their view of human nature, how this influences um, the rest of the political philosophy of liberalism. So general views of liberalism are closely reflected to those that are associated with the Enlightenment. And we're going to talk about the Enlightenment, but first we're going to look at the views uh, of the medieval period before the Enlightenment and how the Enlightenment brought about um, contrasting opinions of the views of human nature. So the principles of human nature on liberalism were first articulated again by John Locke as well as the likes of John Stuart Mill. And the medieval notion of human nature is one that is strongly tied to the religious doctrine of original sin. Religion plays a very you know, important, very prominent role in the uh, medieval period and of, uh, uh, you know, of society and within medieval philosophy in general. So, the traditional Christian understanding is that mankind is somehow deeply flawed and imperfect. And this dates back to the, the idea of original sin uh, with the fall of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And in order to, un to overcome this deeply flawed and imperfect view of, 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 of humanity, uh, one must overcome this by um, praying for the grace of God. Now, these are ideas that were articulated by a number of, of church um, theologians, the likes of uh, St. Augustine uh, of Hippo. Uh, was the main one uh, who talked about the idea of original sin and talked about um, the idea of uh, the concept of grace in his work Confessions. I will link um, some some extra reading on this in the description if you if you're interested, because it really does inform it really does inform the idea of the the medieval Christian understanding of God and the medieval Christian understanding of human nature, and that contrasts. Uh, is 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 very is a very good way to understand how um, liberalism um, sees human nature because the contrast is is stark. So Locke fundamentally denies this view of human nature that we are somehow imperfect and deeply flawed. The liberal view of human nature is that human beings have a capacity to bring about progress, and this entails some kind of further happiness or further ideal. And it obviously clearly contrasts with this medieval um, picture. So one important aspect of liberal, the liberal view of human nature is the idea of rationality. The liberal view asserts that humans are inherently rational creatures. And it is this rationalism that allows humans to find solutions to a, uh, to a number of problems. Um, so as I've written there, solutions to a number of answers, I meant a number of problems. Liberals believe that mankind's innate reason uh, is manifested in debates and discussion and in a logical idea, uh, examination of ideas. This is something that is really explored in the Enlightenment, the idea of empiricism, the idea of logic, and the idea of debate and discussion, uh, which informs people's opinions on things, rather than religious connotations. It is the idea of rationalism that gives the liberal view... Um, the ability to allow human nature to shape its own destiny and it's for this reason we have some kind of um, aspects of free will within the philosophy as well so for liberals individuals are naturally self-seeking and self-serving uh, and it links to this idea of uh, egotistical individualism so egotistical individualism is the view that human beings are naturally drawn to the advancement of their own interests so i if i was you know egotistically individualist I would be striving towards my own individual interests and my own individual um, goals. And liberals claim that not only are, are, are people, are humans egotistical in their, in their views of, 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 in, of, of goal setting and you know, self-seeking, but they're also reasonable. This means that they look to advance their own interests, but they're also so sen sensitive to the, sp 
to the perspectives of their peers. So we see a little balance, a balance here. Okay. So a number of people would argue that there is a sort of egotistical individualism that exists, but there is also this um, sensitivity to the perspectives of their own peers. And this this view of human nature um, does deeply inform upon the view of society. We talked a lot about this very briefly at the end of the last lesson. So the liberal view of human nature is closely linked to the concept of a liberal society. It heavily informs the liberal answer to the question as to whether or not society can live without a state. So if we know, we noticed in the last lesson, we talked about the state of nature. According to Hobbes, the state of nature would be, quote, nasty, brutish and short. And this is informed by his, his views of human nature. And this is inherently because human nature is brutally selfish. By contrast, Locke has a more optimistic viewpoint. He views human nature as relating to this kind of ideas of rationalism and optimistic individualism. And that reason, uh, and the reason lends to the notion that society can indeed exist without the need of a state. Okay, Lo uh, Hobbes believed that um, the only reason that uh, the state uh, informs and regulates society, and that is why the state is so important. And without the without the existence of the state, society would collapse. By contrast, Locke believes that society is what uh, comes first, and it is society that is consented. Uh, that consents to the existence of the state. So it's sort of like a backwards um, interpretation. Locke cites the existence of natural society, uh, which has a number of underlying natural laws. So these natural laws outline a number of natural rights an individual would have in a, in a state of nature. These include the right to life, property, happiness, etc., etc. So liberals accept that life before the existence of the state could be positive and optimistic. OK, and this is because there are these underlying natural laws, these underlying natural rights that people have and that respect to these natural rights can facilitate the existence of a society without a state. Mill argues that the purpose of any society should be to facilitate and promote rigid individualism. So ultimately, the foundational principle of any society is to promote freedom and liberty. And therefore, if this can be done through you know the through the existence of these natural rights then the need for a state is is let is is put into question um, more than in hobbes's view human nature also informs um economic interpretations the economic takes that a, a liberal would have so the approaches that we've already listed in related to human nature and society also informs approaches to economics so because liberals believe that property is a fundamental natural right, it's part of you know nat their natural laws, liberal economic policies will always put private property at the centre of their reasoning. Okay, It's a very, um, you know, at the forefront of, of liberal economics. So as a result, liberals will support capitalism, generally on, uh, on the whole. Uh, liberalism is has been strongly associated with the principles of private enterprise and private ownership and with that being said we could even describe the concept of capitalism as one of economic liberalism so generally speaking the views of liberalism and socialism contrast mainly within their economic perspectives so since one uh, core of the tenets of socialist theory is a critique of capitalism and one of the core tenets of liberalist theory is an acceptance of capitalism we can see where there is contrasting opinions there we're going to talk about socialism in a lot of detail when we move on to that chapter in making a case for the existence of free markets the economist and really the one of the founding thinkers of 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 the economics of capitalist economics adam smith argues that if obstacles to free trade were removed, the invisible hand of the market, uh, the invisible hand of market forces, sorry, would guide traders to success. So there are a lot of ways in which liberal economics can be represented. Capitalism exists in a number of different forms. Adam Smith advocated for a trickle down system of economics, whereby reducing any quantitative and qualitative restrictions on trade would lead to uh, the wealth being naturally trickled down through the rest of society. 
So this is seen um, in today's economic uh, ideologies in more of the in, in uh, expressed by people who would be seen more as uh, conservative in nature. So, for example, the likes of Ronald Reagan uh, and Margaret Thatcher, very conservative thinkers, advocated for a uh, for cutting taxes to to the wealthy in a hope that their ability to generate wealth and this wealth generation will be trickled down to the rest of society. And we can talk about whether or not this is a successful or whether this is a convincing interpretation or not. This is just what the liberal uh, economics um, advocates for. So equally, a liberal economic policy could advocate for the existence of markets, but with some restrictions to ensure distributive justice. So, for example, um, policies um, with like social democrat policies, the idea is that you know there should be the existence of free markets. However, these free markets um, shouldn't be entirely left without any kind of restrictions. There could be um, restrictions put in place by the state, which will um, uh, greatly ensure that there is a, a you know an existence of distributive justice. This is obviously assuming um, people um, advocate for distributive justice as a positive aspect of of economic policy. If you don't think that distributive justice is a, po a positive aspect of economic policy, then the need for regulation of the markets is is less um, is less important. So this really gets into the, the core ideas of classical liberalism, the idea of human nature and the idea of society and economics. In the next lessons, we're going to be looking at the views of the state in a lot more detail, talking a lot in a lot more detail of, uh, you know, the, the Lockean and, and the um, John Stuart Mill's interpretations of the state of nature contrasting with Hobbes. We've already mentioned that before. We're going to talk about it in a lot more detail. Before we start to look at different varieties of, of liberalism and how liberalism has changed and has been incorporated into economic and social policies today.